It is time to celebrate a truly momentous occasion. The recent 50 year anniversary of a discovery that has quite literally shaped the narrative around human evolution. Yes, that's right. Evolutionary scientists everywhere are toasting to the 50 year legacy of Lucy, the most famous ape man ever found. You know, at just three and a half feet tall, it's kind of hard to imagine what all the fuss is about, but who needs height when you've got all of the headlines? Nonetheless, Lucy's anatomy should prompt a deeper investigation into how scientists can draw such conclusions. I mean, all her bones seem to be very ape-like, including a small ape-like skull, uh, a, an ape-like face, long curved ape-like toes for grasping limbs, and an ape-like barrel chest. But you see, the scientist who discovered Lucy, Dr. Donald Johansson, claimed that the knee bones, the pelvis bones, and the fossilized footprints made Lucy an ape man, a, an ape to human ancestor. But our guest today, Dr. Carl Werner, interviewed both Dr. Johansson, who discovered Lucy, and the co-director of the Lucy expedition, Dr. Eves Copens. Now, during these interviews, Dr. Werner detected three instances of fraud involving the ape man claims, and it appears that based on his investigation, all of the celebrations and fanfare about Lucy over the last 50 years might have been just a little bit premature. Dr. Carl Werner is the author and producer of Evolution, the Grand Experiment book and video series, and he just released Volume 4, Episode 4, entitled Nine Categories of Overturned Ape Men. Dr. Werner, welcome to the show. Be with you, David. It is great to have you on today. Listen, the evolutionary community widely celebrates Lucy as this pivotal find in human evolution. Uh, the one article that we printed out before the program states that uh, Johansson and White placed Afarensis at the base of a tree of ancestry that led to more recent species, such as you know, homo, like ourselves, right? So in other words, I, I recognize one word here. Johansson and White placed Aferensis at the base of a tree. It wasn't found as this ape-like ancestor at the very bottom of our lineage of humankind, was it? No, they portrayed her as a small ape-like creature that walked like a human being, which would be very odd to see a, an ape walking like a human being. And uh, they went with that narrative and they're still stuck on that narrative, but it it really is a false narrative because of the issues that you just described. You know, uh, the shape of the pelvis is often cited as evidence that she must have walked upright. Those hip bones just seem perfect for uh, a creature turning from an ape-like ancestor into more of a human-like type of thing. It's learning to walk upright. It's evolving into its current form, but uh, there are some things that uh, many people don't consider when it comes to the pelvis of Lucy. Isn't that correct? Yes, um, a little anatomy lesson here. This is an ape pelvis, and you can see it's a chimpanzee pelvis. You can see it's, if you turn it sideways, it's flat. Yes. Now, over my shoulder is a human pelvis. The human pelvis turns forward, and you can feel it under your belt in the front of you. When Lucy's pelvis was found, it looked like a chimpanzee pelvis. But Dr. Johansson made a copy of the bones and then he cut, 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 and ground, 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 and then he reshaped it into a human-shaped pelvis. And see, he started out with a chimp-shaped uh, chimp pelvis, and he said this, and he ends up with a human-shaped pelvis. He says this. And then he says, oh, look, that proves that Lucy walked upright like a human. It was just over the top scientific uh, falsification. I, I'm just, it's crazy once you understand what he did. So basically, this researcher, in an attempt to create a great scientific discovery, says, oh, we found this evidence makes molds of something that looks very chimp-like, and then begins grinding away and gluing it back together again in such a way that it makes it look more human. If this is the case, then this is, this is pretty close to fraud, isn't it? You know, he believed it. 
he believed that like when Lucy died, she went into the bottom of a lake yeah. and an antelope stepped on her pelvis and reshaped it into a human pelvis. Mm -hmm. So he believed it. I, yeah. I can't say that's fraud. I just say it's over the top, bad science. Yeah. Um, but over enthusiastic uh, then. Over enthusiastic. Okay. Fossilized footprints found near Lucy's remains at Letoli uh, were also presented as evidence that these creatures were walking upright bipedalism. What was the nature of Dr. Johansson's claim regarding those footprints and then the association? Uh, what evidence would call that interpretation into question? Well, the Lucy was found up in Hadar, Afar region mm -hmm. of Ethiopia. And uh, these footprints were found two countries away in Laetoli, Tanzania by Mary Leakey, 1,000 miles away. And Johansson said that these footprints found 1,000 miles away from Lucy were made by Lucy, and this proved that Lucy walked upright like a human because these footprints in Laetoli look like human footprints, like just two people just walked down the beach. The problem was is that Johansson made fraudulent statements about these footprints. He said something to the effect of um, there were no other animals, hominids, like ape men or humans, found at Laetoli, Tanzania, other than Lucy type fossils, afarensis. So he said, who else could have made the footprints because only Lucy type bones were found near the footprints? And this is a false fraudulent statement because he knew when he made that statement that human skull, and that's fossil LH18, was found at Laetoli, Tanzania. He said there was no human skulls, no human bones found at Laetoli, and yet there, here is a human skull that was found in Laetoli. And why not this human made the human footprints? I mean, and that was fraudulent. Wow. Wow. Okay, so are there other aspects of this discovery? I mean, we're talking about something that rocked the scientific community, something that has been highly revered in much of the scientific community, even though there's been skepticism. Uh, are there other examples, intentionally or unintentionally, uh, of this find that weren't considered until much later down the road? Yeah, Dr. Johansson misled the public and his colleagues, he made this fraudulent statement. He said that all detailed anatomical analysis of the Lucy knee joint indicate that Lucy was fully capable of upright bipedal gait and posture. In other words, the knee was human, and so that meant Lucy walked upright. But that was a fraudulent statement. Debbie and I interviewed his partner, Dr. Eves Copens, and ask him, Dr. Copens, was the knee joint of Lucy human-like or ape-like? And he said it was ape-like. Hmm. We also interviewed one of his former students when he gave lectures at Berkeley, and Johansson himself said to the graduate students that his own analysis of the knee joint showed that Lucy's uh, knee was right in the middle of the ape knees, not in the human knees. So wow. he misled the public, and it all started with the knee joint. That would gave him justification to alter the pelvis, and then National Geographic ran with it. Then they had the TV show, and it was a, it, it took 50 years to kind of unearth all this terrible information. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, there was actually one bone right up in this area right here, just below the skull that uh, for many years was overlooked and may not have even been part of the same sample of this ape-like creature. Uh, it took them a while on that. But there's this saying, Carl, uh, uh, something like, um, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck and it quacks like a duck and it looks like a duck, it, maybe it's a duck. Well, it seems like if we've got a, an ape-like a knee joint, and if we've got an ape-like pelvis, and if we've got ape-like skull features, and maybe <laughs> it is what it um, what its scientific name suggests, Australopithecus afarensis, southern ape. Maybe it's nothing more than an ape. You know, I find it sort of curious that 
uh, later on in one of these articles, they state that uh, from, from Donald Johansson's perspective, Lucy was the mother of all humanity. And then it goes on to say that subsequent research and other fossil finds have led to eh, some revisions of Lucy's elevated status. The very fact that she, but it still says, hey, she walked upright. And then goes on to mention Darwin's Descent of Man. Now, of course, Darwin's Descent of Man, that book in and of itself was an incredibly racist uh, volume that basically stated that some people groups were much closer to ape-like ancestors than others and all sorts of other absolutely horrific claims. But in your research, has this happened multiple times through all of these supposed hominid discoveries? No, this is a pattern. Yeah. They get announced, great fanfare, and about 50 to 100 years later, they get overturned. And there's been so many frauds by the human evolution scientists, my count is up to now 150, that this whole field is now called into question. Is this a valid field or is this more like a club that's hiding fossils, making false statements, their colleagues don't correct the false statements when they're live, and then we all find out later, like Neanderthal man, Piltdown man, that it was all bogus. This field has collapsed this year with the discovery of these 150 frauds. This is commonplace in this field, and I'm sorry to say it. Uh, I'm sorry to say it too, because that's not real science. I mean, I know we're all looking for the latest, greatest discovery. I know that we're, we're always wanting to, to find the next big thing. But uh, at the same time, we have to be intellectually honest. We have to be willing to go where the evidence leads. Uh, if you had uh, one thing to say uh, to advise modern science, new researchers, what should we be doing in the future to stay away from all of these embarrassing types of things that uh, uh, you make a discovery and then it falls apart? Number one, do not accept it unless you personally can go investigate the fossil. Most of these uh, fossils, including Lucy, are not viewable, the originals. That's same with Piltdown, same with uh, Neanderthal. And so unless you can personally verify it, don't believe it. Number two, don't believe it until 50 years has passed, mm -hmm. until the scientist dies that's promoting it. Because the evolution scientists tend not to criticize their colleagues until they step back or die and get out of the way. Then they feel comfortable criticizing. But until then, the first 50 years of any fossil is, you might as well ignore it because it's, it's unverifiable. Yeah, absolutely unverifiable, and we should be more careful in science. Carl, thank you so much for what you do for your research that brings to light unashamedly some of these, uh, these dangerous theories that are being presented as fact, and I would love to have you back on uh, a future episode. Well, thank you so much, and it's great to be with your audience, too. Yes, sir. Will, I want you to stick around because we have more content coming your way after the break.